Hello, upcoming famous VTuber. Some of you are probably here because you've seen a YouTube video, a Twitch, or even a TikTok video where people are able to throw items at the streamer. You're able to redeem channel points to actually be able to throw objects at the streamer and make the stream a little bit more interesting overall. I found a way to actually get this working in VR. So if you guys are curious on how to get that working in VR, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it in this tutorial here. If you guys are curious for other guides or tutorials, VR montages, or even VR content in general, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel as it actually helps me be able to pay my rent. I also have a shorts channel and a competitive VR channel if those interest you, but I'll stop wasting your time for now. Let's get right into the video. So to get this set up, we're going to be using two pieces of software, Virtual Motion Capture and another program called VTuber Plus. As a note here, both of these softwares are going to be using our paid softwares. In total, you're going to be looking at spending around eight US dollars to get this up and running, uh, just as a forward in advance for you guys. If you watched the video on how to get this set up with Tifa, we did use a VC face as well with that program, but you don't actually need to use VC face to get this working with VTuber Plus, which is why this is so much less taxing on your computer. On screen here, I'm gonna show you where I go to actually download virtual motion capture. I download it from Booth. The reason I'm showing you guys this is sometimes the page doesn't easily translate. So I'm gonna show you guys where I click to actually be able to download the software. On the right hand side of the screen here, it says free download. Um, you're gonna go ahead and click on that to begin with. And I'll go ahead and make sure to link all of these sites down below in the description if you guys get lost at any point during this video. Go ahead and click on that download, that free download button, and it'll take you to a page to log in. You will need to sign up or create an account here if you don't already have one. Once you've created an account, go ahead and go back to this page, hit that free download button, and it should download a zip folder onto your computer. All you're going to need to do from here is extract that zip folder in some place you want to put it. For me, I usually just extract it directly onto my desktop so that when I'm starting all of my streaming software, I can just easily click on all the folders I need to get it started. So all I've done here is I've created a new folder on my desktop, titled it VMC, and I've extracted all of the files directly into that folder. The next thing that we need to do is we need to boot up Virtual Motion Capture and get the OSC at Protocol Sender. The way we do that, there should be a .exe file in that folder that you just need to start up to start up Virtual Motion Capture. And then once you do that, you should have two uh, windows that open, one that's a screen that's just completely blank, and then a smaller window that has things like settings and calibration on it. You can start setting this up now and import your VRM file. Um, I actually did that initially, but let's go ahead and download the next version of Virtual Motion Capture that has the sender uh, beforehand or else you're gonna have to set that stuff up a second time after you download it. At the bottom of the small window that's open, there is an option that says setting. Go ahead and click on that option and it should pop up with another dialog box for you. Don't mind that my video here actually has my avatar on it. You're gonna have to set this up a second time if you did it the way that I did it here. At the top of the window here, it has an option that says VMC protocol motion sender and that you need to subscribe to the Patreon to get access to that. Go ahead and click on the part here that says Patreon. I tried clicking on the other one previously and wasn't able to navigate through all the menus just because of the language barrier for me. Um, but if you wanna use that method instead, I believe that one will work as well. But for this video, I will be using the Patreon link to show you guys how I set it up. When you click on that link, you will need to select a membership level. You can just select the $3 per month method here. And it is not actually $3 a month here. Uh, if you don't want to continue supporting the person after you get access to their software, you can cancel your membership. So you only have to pay the $3 one time and then you can cancel that membership if you want to go that method. I definitely recommend continuing to support um, these people as they put a lot of time and effort into these. But if you don't have the money, I understand that as well. After you subscribe there, you should have an option at the top that says my membership and has your benefits. And it will also say that you have access to however many unlocked posts back when I did this, it says 17. Click on the view posts and it'll come up with all the posts here, as well as a new version of virtual motion capture uh, that you can download here. Do the same thing that you did with the previous one, download it, even put it in the same folder as the other one. If you do choose to put it in the exact same folder in the other one, make sure to select the option that says replace the files in this destination so you can get access to all the new functions and all the changes that this new version will have. 
make sure that you do close out of any current running instances of virtual motion capture before you try to uh, create the files or it will have you close them anyways. Once you have started up the new version of virtual motion capture, go to the open VRM option and select the VRM file for the avatar that you want to import to virtual motion capture. Give it a second to load up and you can change some of the default settings here. I immediately go to lip sync and select the correct microphone for lip sync to make sure that when I talk with my microphone, the mouth will also move on my avatar. If you have a Vive lip tracker, you can also set that up through the settings as well. Note here that anytime you change the settings of virtual motion capture, you will need to hit that save settings button. Um, and it should remember your last saved settings the next time you load it up, but just be aware that you do need to be hitting that button so that it will remember your settings. The next thing we need to do, hit that setting button. And I like to open the tracker assignment so that I can tell virtual motion capture which trackers belong to which parts of my body. If you move the tracker around, it will actually light up in green. So you can go one by one through each of these and set these up, wave around your left hand and the left hand will light up, wave around your right hand and the right hand will light up. You will need to reopen this menu if it's the controller's not on um, initially. And there is also an auto detect feature that works pretty well. I just like to manually set this up just in case, but go one by one through this and set this up if you want, or you can go ahead and just leave it on auto detect. There are other options you can set up through this menu, such as the Vive Pro Eye Tracker or the Vive Lip Tracker. I'm gonna go ahead and just get onto the next step of the tutorial here so we can start working on that part. If you guys do have those though, it is an option to be able to set those up. On the right side of the screen here, we have an option that says Enable OSC Motion Center. You just need to tick that on for now, and now close this dialog box, and we can test our calibration and test our tracking to make sure virtual motion capture is set up properly. On that smaller window that's open, you should have an option that says Calibration. Go ahead and click on that option, and if all of your trackers are on, they should be represented by white spheres on this screen. What you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to line up the white spheres directly on your avatar where you're standing. And once they are lined up, go ahead and press the trigger on both of your controllers and it should start calibrating. After five seconds, it will grab the data and then it should be fully calibrated with your avatar. It'll have hand tracking, it'll have leg tracking, whatever trackers you have enabled, it should be properly tracking your avatar. The next step here is optional, but under shortcut key, it actually has shortcuts for all of the emotes for your avatar. Personally, I like to disable all of these right at the start, just because I don't want to accidentally be sticking out my tongue, but you can set these up later, so specific button presses will actually make your character do specific emotes. Personally, I like to just remove all of these, and then I like to apply and save this as a preset, just so I don't accidentally do any of the emotes when I'm not wanting to. The next step here is to get the VTuber Plus application on your computer. I'm gonna go ahead and again, put the link in the description for exactly where to go to get this. And same as before, you will need to create an account and download this software. This software is $5, so in total, you're gonna be spending $8 for access to all of this software. You can see in the description here all of the extra abilities that this has, including extra items to throw and customizable ones as well. If you want to read through any of those because you're curious about any of them, go ahead and look through that. But otherwise, go ahead and add this to your cart. Once you purchase the software, it should show up underneath things that you own in my library. You're gonna to wanna to find the application, hit the download button, and this will be a little bit different than yours because there's been a couple of extra versions since then, but there will be a SDK, which is a Unity package, as well as a .zip file. You're going to want to download the .zip file. If you wanna do any editing for the items, you will need the Unity package, and you can come back to this at any time. Once it finishes downloading onto your computer, you're going to need to extract that program um, and save it in a folder. I recommend just saving it in the same folder as Virtual Motion Capture if you want to keep it more organized with all of your VTubing, but you're able to save this wherever you want. Once it finishes saving or you got all of your stuff organized, you're going to want to open the VTuber Plus application 
and then it's going to give you a terms and conditions and then it's actually going to tell you in the program itself how to set all of this up. First thing you're going to need is your Twitch username. Then you're going to need to get your license key and your OAuth key. The license key can be found in your library underneath the things that you own. And then the OAuth key, it actually has instructions on how to set that up. I'm not going to show it on my end just because that is private stuff. Uh, make sure you don't share this stuff with anyone as they will be able to alter some of your Twitch things if they get access to this if you are using Twitch. So just be very careful with this information and when you open it up. Once you log in, you should have just a blank black screen here. The first thing you're going to want to do is import your VRM. You can actually use a different VRM than you used in virtual motion capture if you want to, and you can even use a VSF in this program as well. So just keep that in mind. The only thing that we need virtual motion capture for is actually sending over your coordinates of your trackers. So go ahead and load up whatever VRM file that you want to load up here. Reopen Virtual Motion Capture and move over to where it says Enable OSC Motion Sender. In the general settings of VTuber Plus, it will have the OSC Motion Sender general settings for the IP and the port number. You just need to make sure that address and that port number are the same as the information inside the general settings in VTuber Plus. And you should see your model, if it is set up and tracking in Virtual Motion Capture, tracking properly now in VTuber Plus. As you can see, I'm able to move around here. And in VTuber Plus, we have the options at the top right. If I hit the throw, I can start throwing objects at my model or dropping things on the head. You can truly see the amount of things that we can do in VTuber Plus. I can change the uh, RGB. I can be an RGB dragon in this case. But you can see, compared to Tifa, how much more functionality we have. Now, if we move over to Avatar settings on the right here, you can actually change where the colliders are. So you don't need to do this in Unity anymore. You can show exactly on your model model where you want the colliders to be. And VTuber Plus has all sorts of additional options. If you want people to actually be able to change your avatar on screen, just make sure you set up the colliders individually for each avatar. But people will be able to change the avatar with channel points. You'll be able to change all sorts of things. I'm not going to go any more into the setup for VTuber Plus for this video, but if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. This should be everything that you guys need to set it up. Uh, but again, if you guys run into any issues, just let me know what's going on. If the video did help you out, uh, make sure to leave it a like and remember me if you end up becoming famous. If you guys are interested in any more VTubing tutorials, maybe VR montages or VR content in general, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out a ton. But I hope this guide helped you all out on your journey to becoming a VTuber.